I recently purchased Creality's new K1. This is their super fast, I'm talking lightning fast printer that moves like at the speed of light. It's impressive in so many ways, but I'm sorry to say this, but I don't really recommend getting it. Now it kind of pains me to say that because it really is a wonderful printer in a lot of ways. It's super capable, it's super fast, it's got a lot going for it. But the fact is, if you're looking at something in this price range, I'd get this guy behind me. This is the Bamboo Lab P1P, also which I paid for out of pocket. So none of the printers that I'm showing here today were given to me. Uh, there's no brand sponsorships, anything like that. I just bought these myself and wanted to try them out because I wanted to see what's the best printer out there? What's the best bang for your buck in this space? Now, by no means is this thing a slouch. It is really pretty awesome in so many ways. Let's start by taking a look at what is similar or what's the same between this printer and the Bamboo Lab P1P. When comparing these two printers, the first thing you have to admit is both of these are insanely fast printers. Both 3D printers come with an LED light strip to light up your area. The hot ends on both of these printers are capable of reaching 300 degrees Celsius, so that can handle most types of filaments. That covers almost everything, and then the beds also can reach 100 degrees Celsius, again, giving it the option to do just about any sort of filament. These are also both direct drive extruders. It's just what you would expect with a Core XY like this, and it works fantastically well. Not only that, but they both have the metal dual gears inside to actually run the extruder, which provides a great positive traction on the filament as it's pushing it out or retracting it. Easily, one of my very favorite features that these both share is that I no longer have to worry about setting up some third-party hardware or software in order to send my print to the 3D printer. Everything is basically built in. They've got Wi-Fi and they've got cloud options so I can basically get something sliced on my desktop for example or my laptop and then send it to this printer without ever actually seeing the printer or coming down here and touching the screen or anything like that. It's all done over the web and it works really well. Now along with that another huge one that is a game changer for these printers and for printers in general is that we finally kind of passed that hump in my opinion of being able to get successful first layers for our prints. This thing prints the first layer pretty perfectly pretty much every time. Uh, there have been a couple of minor exceptions that I'll cover in just a little bit, but for the most part it does an amazing job. I don't have to sit here and babysit it. And then the P1P, in my opinion, is slightly even better than that at getting a perfect first layer every single time. So those are the similarities between these two printers, but there's a lot of big differences. And there's a lot of things that I'm just not in love with about this, and there's a lot of things that I am. First thing is the price. The price on these obviously is a little bit different. It's 599 US dollars for the Creality K1, 699 for the Bamboo P1P. In terms of speed, the max print speed on the K1 is actually faster. It's 600 millimeters per second compared to 500 millimeters per second on the P1P. Now, I found that that doesn't really make much of a difference because you're almost never printing at that speed. The fact is they're both insanely fast and it's blurry to the eyes to watch these things go. Next up is what doesn't look like a big difference on paper, but it actually kind of is, and that is the print volume. This one is 220 by 220 by 250, and that means the Z height is the tallest and the X and Y are 220. On the P1P, it's 256 on all three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. Now that may not seem like much, but when you do the math on that, that actually means that this one is one third smaller, the K1 is one third smaller than the P1P. And to me that makes a big difference, and here's one of the reasons why, check this out. Here is a Mandalorian helmet, and this is a full-sized helmet that I can put on. And guess what? I printed this on the P1P. You can print this whole entire thing in one solid piece. But if you're do trying to do things like this size, for example, then that extra one third is a big deal. The next difference is one that I really didn't care about initially, and then it became one of the biggest convenience features, we'll say, and capabilities of the Bamboo Lab printers that the K1 just doesn't have and I don't think ever will. If you look at how this is constructed, there's no filament cutoff, there's no shoot for excess waste or the poop shoot as they're called on the bamboo labs, and there's no indication here that we're going to be able to see multiple filaments being handled on this printer in the future. The bamboo lab, as you probably know, can handle up to 16 different colors. 
It uses what's called an AMS, so it's a material management system that basically handles four different spools per system. You can put four of those together to give you up to 16 colors, or you can just use the individual spool holder that comes on the back of the P1P. So these are upgrades, they cost more. They're about $350 per AMS of four colors. And keep in mind, you can just buy the P1P without an AMS and then add one later anytime you want to. It's not about being able to print multiple filaments or multiple colors in one print. Yes, you can do that. To me, it's about the convenience of having different filaments and different colors available on your printer whenever you want without having to swap out spools. This, for me, has been huge. So for example, a lot of times I'll keep a PLA plus in black and a PLA plus in white. Then I'll keep some, maybe some red uh, PETG and then maybe some beige polyterra. But I can actually have all four of those colors on the P1P at one time. So between those, I can kind of print whatever I want and I don't have to come down here and swap filaments. So not having to swap out spools constantly is a pretty big deal. There's also a little bonus on this, and this is something that's brand new that was just released from Bamboo Lab, but I had to try it. You can actually purchase a CMYK kit. Now, if you're familiar with CMYK, it stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. Key meaning in print, it's typically black. On a screen, it's typically white. And in this case, with printing, it's a white filament or a white key as well. So you can actually load up your CMYK here, and then you can produce a lithophane. You run it through a free program that allows you to customize your settings, and you can produce a full color lithophane. Now, that's a specialty case. Not everybody's gonna need or want to do that, but it's just something that, again, you can do if you have an AMS. The K1 here, it just doesn't have that capability, and as far as I can tell, it probably never will. While I'm tapping things over here, this enclosure is the other big difference, right? This is obvious, you see it right away, and this is one of the biggest things that's argued about between the K1 and the P1P. P1P, in order to save costs, they've removed quite a few things, and one of those was the enclosure. So the enclosure allows you to do quite a few things. You can print things that need to have a certain consistent temperature inside the cabin here. You can also print things that don't react well to any sort of a draft or movement in the air. Now personally, it's not a big deal for me. I'm printing a lot of PLA+, I'm printing some PETG, and it doesn't seem to make a big difference whether I have an enclosure or not. But if you're doing something that requires that, that could be a really big deal. You can, of course, print your own enclosure for the Bamboo Lab printers, and they have three different files available for free that allow you to print everything. I went ahead and did one on mine, but there's still no front on it. There's still no top on it. So you're gonna have to come up with your own method or buy something in order to do that. Or you can go cheap and just throw a big cardboard box on top of the thing, and that will do the same job just maybe a little more ghetto, but it works. Speaking of things that were cut out from the Bamboo Lab P1P in order to cut costs, look at this display here. This display is really nice and it's really got uh, everything that you need. It's full color, it's touch screen. The P1P has a pretty poor interface. Uh, we'll put it that way. The reason I don't care that much is because I'm able to use my phone to do anything I need to do on these printers anyway. So it's not a huge deal, but something to consider. And unfortunately, you cannot upgrade the P1P to the nicer display. You're kind of stuck with that one. The other thing removed from the P1P was this part cooling fan. Right here on the K1, you see it comes with it. If you want to get one for your P1P, you can add that. It's $30 to take that um, from the website and add that onto your printer. Okay, this next one is a big one, and it's the slicer. The slicer software that comes with these are very different. There is a proprietary slicer software that comes with Bamboo, and that's the Bamboo Slicer software. It, if I'm not mistaken, it's a branch of Prusa Slicer, and on that one, it is really, really robust. I love actually working with the Bamboo Slicer. It works quickly, it's accurate in its estimates, and it gives you features galore. My favorite thing about it is the ease with which you can actually estimate the cost of things and then lay out all of your different screens, your different beds essentially, and have those all ready at once. This guy on the other hand uses, I believe it's called uh, Creality Print. And Creality Print is a offshoot of Cura, but they've taken one of the best things of Cura and removed it. And that is the fact that over on the right side, you have all these different settings in Cura and you can customize which ones you show, which ones you don't show, how advanced you get essentially. But with the Creality Print here, you don't have that option. You have a way dumbed down, simplified version over on the right. And then you have all of the stuff that you have to go into the edit mode to see all your actual settings every time. 
Not a huge deal, but it's kind of like, why are they doing that? I mentioned the fact that the camera is now included with the P1P, but the Creality K1 doesn't come with a camera. Supposedly, you're gonna be able to get one, but at the time of this recording, there, there's nothing on their website. They also say that you'll be able to add an optional LiDAR system on this. Again, nothing on their website. You can't find one. I will say, however, that the camera that comes on the P1P is not impressive. It's not a high-end camera. But what it does do is it allows you to monitor and just check in on your prints and see if everything's going okay. You can also set it up to do automatic time lapses with it. They're not super high quality, but it does do those. And it's just free with the printer. So I think that's a pretty nice thing. Whew. Okay, this next one is really my biggest pet peeve with the Creality K1. One of the things that I think has become a total disaster is their mobile app. And I can't stand it. It feels like I'm going into a cheap, unpaid, like non-premium version of a bad video game. A lot of times when I open up the app, it makes me wait five seconds and shows me some sort of ad sort of thing before I can actually get to the contents of it. Then when I get there, there's all these coins and animations and things going on. And it feels like they're trying to turn it into this, this video game ecosystem that's gone wrong. Here's one of the things that bugs me the most about it and it's driving me nuts you don't have the option to limit what notifications it sends you. So if you wanna know if your print has gone wrong or if the power turned off or if your print is done, you also have to endure every other notification that they decide to send you and they will literally send you anywhere from, I'd say five to 10 notifications per day on your phone so that you are just bombarded with stuff and you don't know what to care about because it's so much garbage that they're inundating you with. So take a look at some of these from my watch. This is going off constantly saying that there's a sale on this or there's a contest here or win one of these. I've tried to crawl through the settings to see if I can turn all of that off but leave on my print notifications and it appears to be an all or nothing. Now if I'm wrong on that, let me know in the comments but I can't seem to find a way to do that and this is a deal breaker for me. This is just a huge mess. Creality, if you're listening to this, fix that thing, it's a mess. Like it's, it's really bad. Now contrast that to Bamboo Handy. Bamboo Handy is down to business. Gives you what you need. It's got everything that you need on there. It's got a camera built into all their printers so you can just actually pop in and take a look. You can reprint something that you've printed in the past, for example. Um, you can adjust your settings, adjust your speed, adjust your flow, all of those things from the app. It's just all the things that you would expect and not all of the garbage that comes with the Creality Cloud app. I actually uh, printed these right from the cloud. These never touched a desktop or a laptop, but what happened was the print quality was not that great. So this one didn't ever lay flat. It started to have that warping where it came up off the bed and it started to get smushed layers. And then this other counterpart piece didn't print very well either, unfortunately. So it's not round in the holes here, again, because the parts were coming up and it had some issues where it just wasn't sticking on very well. And not to say that you can't troubleshoot that and fix that, but I've never had that problem on any of my Bamboo Lab printers. Finally, I wanna talk about one thing that is pretty broken on this in my opinion. And I've seen other people report on this too, so I know it's not just me. There's a drag chain or a cable chain on top of here that comes with it, which I appreciate, that's a good thing, but it does two things really poorly. Number one, there's a little switch on top of the hot end assembly here that actually will disengage the gear extruders. So you push it to one side, you push it to the left, and it will basically put those gears into place so that you can extrude everything and retract everything as expected. But then if you push it over to the right, then it's going to pull those apart a little bit, which is meant to allow you to feed in or retract your filament manually. Unfortunately, the cable chain, when it goes over to the left side of the printer, will actually push against the disengage piece, the little switch, and disengage your hot end, which means you're either gonna under extrude or just not extrude. And that's been my experience is that when I had that on there, it would actually not extrude. The big difference or the factor that's coming into play here is not only the cable chain, but the cable chain in connection with this lid. So if I take this lid off, then the cable chain has enough extra room over on the side to pop out and come over here and do its thing. So one of the big advantages of having the enclosure on here is that you can do those different filaments and things like that. But I would say, at least for my experience, and again, I've heard this from other um, people who have reviewed this, 
is that you have to either take off the cable chain altogether in order to get that, or you need to open the thing up. Whew, okay. So I've talked about all the th reasons they're the same and all of the differences between them. I've had some issues right off the bat with this one. And after trying to make some tweaks, I still have had some issues. There's so many little red flags on this thing that make me feel like I'm just gambling a little bit that this thing is gonna last and that it's going to give me the quality of print that I need. So the fact that I've already had several prints that just didn't come out right makes me really concerned. Whereas with the P1P, for example, I haven't had those issues. That thing has been pretty rock solid from day one, like literally from the first print until now. I've put that thing through a lot of printing, done a lot of stuff with it, and it's done an amazing job. Love to hear what you think about that in the comments below. Now with these, they're printing so much faster. You can print so much more. And a lot of times you're like, what are the coolest things that I can print? So Eric has done a really awesome video that you can check out right up here to take a look at some of the cool and crazy prints that you can make. So have a look at that. In the meantime, I'm Nils. I'm Eric. And I'm Wyatt. And this is the 3D Printing Zone.